So we're going to take this last video uh, series in Chapter 6 and discuss the FIFO inventory method in process costing, first in, first out. And it'll help if we visualize this in terms of pictures. So here's a factory, and here's a line on the factory, and here are some uh, items that are in process right now, working their way down the line. And we start a period of time, let's say it's day one of whatever period of time, and on day one there'll be some production still in the system left over from the day before. And items come in one end and they go out the other end. So let's conceive of this as day one and let's say that everything on the line right now represents 200 incomplete units. This is our work in process beginning count. And we're going to try to move away from weighted average to FIFO, and I want to just give you the rationale behind FIFO. You'll recall that in terms of raw materials, let's say that we have a certain percentage of these done, and in terms of maybe conversion costs, we have another percentage of these done, and we converted them into equivalent units. Well, we can think about that for a second, but as we start the period of time, what goes in this end are units that will start. They'll go in at that end, and as they go in, they'll push a box off the other end. So the work in process is the fir are the first units to come off the line at the other end. Also, costs get added. Well, if costs get added, a certain amount of those costs must be to finish the products that are sitting there. All of those products that are sitting there must require some costs to finish. So we can think about it this way. If the units are 55% complete in terms of raw material, it means they're 45% incomplete. Same with conversion. If 30% of the costs are complete, that means they're 70% incomplete. So as costs go in to the system on day one, they must go to complete these incomplete units. So the equivalent units that the incomplete part represents are 90 equivalent units in terms of raw material and 140 equivalent units in terms of conversion costs. So let's uh, zoom all the way to day 30. We're going to go right to the end of the month. Here's our production line and at the end of the month because we keep the line going all the time there'll be some units in process at the end of the month. And here they are here. So we have our units in process at the end of the month. And at the end of the month, we also have a big pile of units that are completed at the end of the month and ready to go somewhere. So we'll just draw a nice little uh, three-dimensional picture of I can to give you an impression that these are units that are completed and let's give it a number let's say that we've completed 4800 of these units and we have our work in process as well so we're going to give a number to the work in process and we'll say that we have maybe 400 units here this is our work in process ending count so we have our beginning count and our ending count and these are 4800 units this big pile let's call that 4800 units these are complete and transferred. 4,800 of them have been completed and transferred. Now, here's the logic behind FIFO. Of these 4,800, the first 200 had to come from here because there were 200 incomplete units. We incurred some extra costs to finish them, so those first 200 left, which means the next 4,600 4, were started and finished and then 400 more were started but unfinished. Now for the whole month this is our total cost. Our total cost is all the money we needed to finish the work in process at the beginning of the month, all the money that was required to complete all of the units and all of the money required to at least start the work in process that we end the month with. So in FIFO, we're only concerned with the costs for the period. That's it. 
The second difference in FIFO is that we convert our beginning count into incomplete equivalent units, and costs must have gone to complete those first. So that means we have 90 incomplete units with respect to raw materials and 140 equivalent units with respect to conversion costs. That's what this month's money, or this period's money, is going to go for first, is to finish the incomplete part of last month's work in process. So that our cost per equivalent unit will be calculated by our total raw material cost added just in this period, divided by our equivalent units in raw materials, plus our total conversion costs added just in this period, divided by our equivalent units in conversion costs. And we're going to show, I'm going to, if you stick with the, the, the video for a few more minutes, we're going to show the production schedule and how it changes and how we calculate equivalent units of the beginning work in process inventory. That's the only real difference here. So let's have a look at this production schedule now that we sort of understand that, well, yeah, it makes sense that the units that we start the month with, the work in process, really need to be finished first. So some money goes to complete those. So our production report looks pretty much the same. We still have the same three sections that we have with job costing. Part one is our quantity schedule and equivalent units. Now this just changes slightly. So we always start with units to be accounted for. And we'll do the same thing here, the units to be accounted for. And the units to be accounted for is the same thing that we would do under weighted average. <clears throat> Our work in process beginning count, we know was, well, in the example I gave you in the previous screen was 200, but we'll assume it's something. We add to that the units started, whatever units we started, and we'll get a total for that, total units. I'm not going to put any numbers in there. I'm just giving you the outline of this, total units. The next section is exactly the same. Instead of units to be accounted for, we have units accounted for as follows. Now, here's where it differs. Under weighted average, we would just go right to units transferred, but we don't do that. We have to turn the work in process into equivalent units. So let's do our equivalent units and let's assume we have all three costs. We'll do materials, we'll do labor, and we'll do overhead. Materials, labor, and overhead. And we'll start with um, from work in process, the units accounted for from work in process. Remember there were 200 of them. 200 of them that were incomplete. So what we want to know is, of the costs incurred this month, how much of those costs went to complete the incomplete part? So if we had a total of A units, A partially complete units, what we'd, we'd do is we'd multiply that A by the percentage of materials in which it was incomplete. We'd multiply again by labor the percent that it was incomplete, and again with overhead the percent that it was incomplete. Recall in weighted average, we just took the ending inventory and multiplied it by the percentage that it was complete. Here we're looking for how much was incomplete because this month's costs must have went to complete those units. Next, we add units started and completed. Well, there's no problem there. It's the full amount. So let's say that we had B units. That means 100% of the materials, labor, and overhead were added. We can add B right across for equivalent units. But we also end with some work in process ending inventory. So what we did before in um, weighted average, we do the same thing. We take C times the percentage that it's complete. And we do the same thing for labor and the same thing for conversion. If it's complete, we must have paid for some part of it being complete. Well, if we added all, all of it up into what an equivalent unit would be, how many equivalent units does that make? So we sum these up, A, B, and C, all of those units, so A, B, and C, we'll get a total for them. And that total of A, B, and C should equal the total we got up above. 
We have a total here, D, E, and F. These are equivalent units in terms of every cost that we incurred. So the D, E, and F are basically the same. The, sorry, the, um, the work in process ending count, we calculate that the same way we would calculate uh, it under weighted average. So let's look at part two. How do we figure out our cost per equivalent unit? So we see in part one, the thing that's changed is the work in process inventory and the units that were started and only those that were completed. That's the only thing that's changing there. So for our costs, we start with costs to be accounted for. And we'll have work in process beginning balance. And we don't have to, we didn't incur any costs on that beginning balance in this period, but we did transfer so those 200 units, they did finish and transfer, so we have to account for the costs that left, but they did not incur that month, so we're not going to add them in any of the columns, material, labor, or overhead. Then we had costs that were added during the period. Now, under FIFO, that's all we're concerned about are the costs that are added during the period. We do not mix costs from one period to the previous period, which is why we don't add work in process in each of those cost categories. Once we have these costs, that's all. That, that's it. Just the costs added that period. We'll divide it by our equivalent units that we got earlier, D, E, and F, and that'll give us our cost per equivalent unit. So it's just whatever our total divided by D, our total divided by E, and our total cost divided by F. Add them together, and we'll get what's called the whole cost. So this changes slightly. It's actually simpler because all we're concerned about are the costs incurred this period only. So let's do a cost reconciliation. I left part two <clears throat> at the top of the screen there. The cost reconciliation is probably the most, uh, well, the, the more different than the uh, um, weighted average and can be a little tricky. So let's follow along. Costs accounted for uh, as follows. We have costs to be accounted for and costs accounted for as follows. Transferred out. We have what, uh, what we transferred out. That's a subheading. Under transferred out, what did we transfer out? Well, we transferred the first 200 units of work in process, which had some beginning balance, but we added costs to that. What costs did we add? Well, we added the equivalent units of work in process inventory that were left to be finished. And recall that was A times the percent incomplete. And we multiply that by our cost per unit, dollar sign over D. And we'll get a dollar amount for what we added to complete the raw materials part. We do the same here whatever A was, our work in process beginning inventory, multiplied by the incomplete part, and then multiply that by our cost uh, uh, per, uh, uh, per labor. And we do the same thing with overhead. So we'll get our beginning balance and each of the three costs necessary just to complete those units. And that'll give us a total for the work in process, the total cost from beginning inventory that we transferred. So there's 200. That's, that's, that's done, or there's the beginning balance. Then we also transferred out units started and completed, right? We're, try, we're trying to figure out how much was the cost of the stuff we transferred and how much is the cost of the stuff we have left. Well, the cost of the stuff we transferred was the costs necessary to finish what we started with plus all of the units we did finish. And there that is right there, B. So that's our cost. When we add those two together, that's our total cost of units transferred. Now let's look at the cost of our ending balance. This is the same as we've always done it before. This is the same as we did in weighted average. It's just, remember we said that uh, we'll call some number C, our number of partially complete units. So we multiply C by the percentage complete and multiply that by the cost, the labor cost per, the sort of material cost per unit. Again, our equivalent units multiplied by our labor cost per unit. And then our uh, equivalent units in terms of conversion multiplied by our conver uh, sorry overhead multiplied by our overhead cost per unit. And that will give us the value of our work in process ending inventory. We sum those three numbers. And this dollar sign value down here should equal 
that dollar sign value up there. I know it's difficult in an abstract way to conceptualize this, so stick with me for a couple more videos. We're going to do some problems.